What's up guys, welcome back to another Dragon Ball Super episode review. I don't know how to do, a, I don't know how to do an intro, so I'm just gonna leave this in. This is my second time recording this because I messed up the first take because I said I wasn't going to swear uh, starting the new year and stuff like that for my videos. And I accidentally kind of slipped up and I'm not, I don't, I don't really want to have that happen again last three videos that I uploaded over the past couple of days about Logan Paul um, those are those have since been privated because like a they didn't get any views so I'm probably just gonna delete them anyways not saying I did them for the views but no one really honestly cared no one honestly cares what a small channel has to has to say about him anyway so who cares right um, that and because I don't want a strike on my channel I don't want the potential chance of getting a strike on my channel so those are being privated I'm probably gonna delete them later today uh, it's Sunday. It's like almost 7.20 right now. 7 o'clock in the morning. Yes, I woke up very early. But we're back here with a Dragon Ball Super episode. We're doing Dragon Ball Super episode 122. And this episode is... It's good, but in, in terms of like story and plot, it could have been a lot better. It, it was mainly action for majority of the time but the beginning of the episode like narratively was actually done really well and you have to uh give the writers uh props for doing that and obviously the animators who did do this episode because takahashi is back for episode 122 and man does this episode just look fantastic it looks it just looks great like takahashi no matter what episode he's doing it always just ends up looking fantastic you, and you have to respect the man for making dragon ball super look as as good as it does and I, it almost makes me wish that every single super episode can look as good as it does in episode 122 and i think episode i forget which episode it was but it was the episode that we i think we first got takahashi's animation not well not really but you know in terms of like in terms of quality in terms of the animation that it is takahashi's animation was very good the first time that we really saw how amazing his animation was was when super saiyan god goku first fought uh fused kefla or or Ke kefla whatever however, however you want to say her name right so the entirety and the premise at the, at the beginning of the episode for uh, Super Episode 122, it almost kind of felt like an old Western kind of movie. You know, like how in like Western movies they show like the two cowboys are in a standoff, and like they show like his hand next to his gun and his boots and his hat. They kind of did the same thing with like Topo's mustache, Dispo's ears, like Goku's like shoes or his boots, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and if Vegeta's like armor and his arms crossed, it was narratively and animation wise, it was very good in the beginning of the episode. I was, I was very impressed. And of course, you know, the whole big thing is, is that it's universe seven versus universe 11. So these are the last two universes of the tournament of power. And with what happened in the beginning of the episode, not the beginning of the episode, but what happens in the episode is very crazy very interesting indeed and of course this is about the saiyan prince himself uh vegeta vegeta does do a lot in this episode and if you're a vegeta fan of course you're, you're gonna like this episode a lot even though he kind of kind of gets brutalized by the end of it so the beginning starts off with the, the daishinkan um shorting out and bringing all of the universes into bleachers kind of like next to each other so he shortens the bleachers and brings all the universes like basically right next to each other uh i i i can see you can see the how uncomfortable everyone is and it's kind of it's kind of funny in that sense but uh you know it's, it's kind of like whatever you don't it's not really that big of a deal besides that the now all the universes can communicate with each other a, a lot easier you know kind of be like, yeah, you're gonna lose Universe Seven, and then yeah, the Universe Seven just get can get really annoying. So yeah, that that happens, and then of course the fight starts off um, with Goku and Jiren kind of just like walking up towards each other. They're showing the fighters from Universe Seven and Eleven, and then Goku powers up the blue. Goku powers up the blue, 
and it looks like he's almost trying to reach like another level beyond Super Saiyan Blue, which is, of course, because Goku and what we've seen from him in the last like few weeks to like a month or so is that it's Ultra Instinct. It kind of seems like he's trying to reach on the level of Ultra Instinct to fight Jiren, and no, it doesn't happen. Goku goes Super Saiyan Blue. Uh, they both charge at each other. Black smoke kind of erupts from an explosion that happened in the beginning of the fight. And it shows that Goku is surprisingly stronger. Take that how's, uh, how you how you want it because this is Dragon Ball and considering just where we're at right now with the series with Dragon Ball and how they're doing it, it's, it's just going to happen that way. Maybe they'll take it a different route after Determining the Power, hopefully. But right now, we're just going to have to deal with it. If, for those of you who are, like, bothered by it, just just suck it up. Who cares? Who really, who really honestly cares? They're gonna, they're all going to get end up stronger anyway, so who honestly really cares? And Goku in his blue form, though, is showing to be able to kind of handle Jiren. But I'm going to go ahead and say that Jiren, this whole episode, is holding back against... Uh, obviously Goku maybe a little bit maybe not as much as he did for Vegeta but maybe a little bit for Goku until he reaches Ultra Instinct obviously right that was so then that way Jiren can obviously you know go full power um, Goku is about to charge up at Jiren and then go Vegeta is like no Kakarot I have to I want to I want to see his strength so Vegeta charges at Jiren obviously it doesn't do anything because Jiren is the, the strongest guy ever for plot reasons I guess uh, Frieza is fighting Dispo actually. Frieza is shooting a bunch of death beams. Uh, can't hit Dispo because Dispo is very, very fast. Uh, apparently, he's the first person to be beyond the speed of light, but that's not actually right. Those of you who think that he's the first person to ever do that, you're wrong, but whatever. So, yeah, Frieza is fighting Dispo. 17 and Gohan are actually fighting uh, Topo, which we actually do see next. Topo. Uh, slants his fist onto the ground, uh, shatters it, and obviously he's fighting Gohan in 17, which should be interesting. Uh, obviously, Gohan has seen Topo fight before, so he kind of gives 17 a little inside info about Topo and kind of like how he fights a little bit. And then, of course, Go Goku and Vegeta are going to be fighting Jiren most of the time, so should be very interesting. Vegeta, like I said, he isn't able to do a whole lot, and he kind of just gets smacked around by Jiren. It's kind of kind of funny. Uh, Jiren does kind of like a whole bunch of blows of attacks. Vegeta's watching it happen and we do see like uh, what he does next afterwards. So he goes back towards Jiren. Jiren does the same attack that he was just doing to Goku and Vegeta actually manages to dodge all of the attacks kind of like Ultra Instinct X-esque because Whis does mention something about Vegeta and him trying to go Ultra Instinct. He's saying that that's possibly what he's been trying to do. What he's trying to do this whole time, which obviously it's supposed to be a tease. We don't know if he's going to get Ultra Instinct or not, but it's definitely a possibility. Um, but G Vegeta dodges all of Jiren's attacks, and then Vegeta actually gets an attack right in the gut on Jiren. And obviously, this is a shock, and even Jiren's actually surprised a little bit because. Uh, th this is a big deal, you know, like the only person that's actually been able to land like a solid hit on Jiren was Goku and he was in Ultra Instinct, which was only known to be obtainable by the gods. Only the gods seem to be only seem to be the only beings in the universes to be able to obtain it. And Vegeta right here as Super Saiyan Blue was able to get a hit on Jiren. So this is a big deal. For, this is a really big deal. Uh, and then obviously I can't say it enough, but the animation just looks fantastic. I, I, I can't I can't go over Taka I can't go over it. Takahashi is just so good at animating some of these episodes. It's fantastic. So yeah, they're all pretty surprised. They're like, oh, oh no, the Jiren's getting pushed back. Jiren is on the defensive actually, and then Vegeta obviously. I mean Vegeta, he's 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 going at him. He's he's going at him, not really doing a whole lot. Uh, Vegeta gets pushed back by Jiren, obviously. Uh, Vegeta actually very quickly shoots off a Gallic gun. Jiren um, kind of reflects it back, and then Jiren actually starts going uh, more at f more 
uh, he starts upping his strength. That's the word I'm looking for. That's the phrase I'm looking for. Uh, because Vegeta actually does mention, and that's what my, and this proves my point about Jiren kind of holding, holding back significantly, if even, um, that he is holding back because Vegeta is like, oh, you were stronger and faster against Kakarot, right, or Goku. And then Vegeta, once he says that, Jiren starts, you know, obviously becoming more powerful. Uh, and more faster than Vegeta ever expected. Jiren shoots off a blast over at Vegeta. Vegeta is hurting. He's struggling. It looks like he's about to get knocked off the arena. He's right at almost the edge. And then there's a huge explosion. We're supposed to believe that Vegeta got eliminated. No, that doesn't happen. And he, he doesn't get. He doesn't. He isn't shown being being eliminated either uh, for next week's episode because at the previous we do see him uh, there. He's. He's in Super Saiyan Blue, and Goku is in Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken, so we'll see. In terms of power scaling, some people might be kind of confused because it's been shown previously that Goku couldn't even handle Jiren in Super Saiyan Blue. And then Goku was handling him kind of okay, and then so was Vegeta for a good portion of the fight. So power scaling-wise, people are kind of confused. It's whatever. We get a couple more shots with uh, Dispo. And Topo again with their fights and stuff like that. Um, Gohan shoots a full power Kamehameha at, at Topo and it does nothing. It's kind of. <sighs> I'm running out of breath. I apologize. <laughs> I'm not really trying to talk about the other fights as much as I would for Vegeta and Jiren, just because that's that's the big fight of the episode, and I don't really want to talk about the other fights as much, um, like unless that's like the big premise of the episode. So yeah, Vegeta is shown, uh, he's immersed in black smoke from the explosion. Uh, Jiren kind of mocks his pride, saying that he's arrogant, he's stubborn. Vegeta's like, yeah, I am arrogant, I am stubborn. He powers up to Super Saiyan Blue, and then he starts charging up a Final Flash, his, his ultimate technique, and people are surprised. People are surprised because it's shown, or they're saying that Vegeta is somehow stronger than he was just previously before which is surprising it's very surprising uh vegeta shoots out the final flash at jiren of course it does nothing to jiren and jiren kind of holds like a a key sphere in his hand right next to vegeta's like like gut stomach area and then he gets uh like engulfed in, inside of the spear and it's enlarged he's inside of it and then obviously it's doing a lot of damage because that's what Jiren is looking for. It does a lot of damage to Vegeta and then Vegeta literally falls like face first into the ground. He's there, he's laying down, he's hurt, he's struggling a lot. And then uh, he's there on the floor. It shows his face and his eyes and it's almost as if he, it's almost like his eyes are like kind of like silver-ish, kind of like, kind of like that. Uh, I can't say that it is silverish. I have to look back at it again. But people are wondering if Vegeta now has like Ultra Instinct, maybe. But from what we see in the previews for the next episode next week, uh, I think it's gonna be like I think it's gonna be maybe a, maybe a few more episodes until we finally see Vegeta get Ultra Instinct because he's most definitely gonna get it. Let's be honest here, because in terms of power scaling with how they're handling both Goku and Vegeta, they're going to try to make them both as equally as powerful as possible, which is why they kind of gave Vegeta Super Saiyan Blue without even really seeming as if he was able to go into Super Saiyan God. And then, of course, it was a lot easier for Goku because he got the Super Saiyan God transformation and then he went Super Saiyan Blue. But for, for Vegeta, he had to work for that. He had to work insanely hard for that, so... It's most definitely gonna happen that Vegeta is gonna get Ultra Instinct. His eyes are kind of like silver, grayish. I'm kind of looking back at it again. It's kind of like grayish, like silverish, kind of like maybe like a like a cyan color, maybe kind of like bluish color, like just from Super Saiyan Blue, or like just regular Super Saiyan, kind of like that. It's kind of like a mixture of colors to me, but it's more so. It's more so trying to like gray out and go to black than it is the silver. So very interesting. Vegeta's there on the ground, and then of course the episode ends off there. And yeah, we're gonna have to wait until next week. We're gonna see Goku fight Jiren a whole bunch, and then Vegeta gets back up, and then he's in Super Saiyan Blue again. So 
I don't know what else is gonna happen the next week. Maybe Vegeta unlocks Ultra Instinct next week at the at the end of the episode. That's a possibility. We don't really know yet. We're gonna have to wait and see. But that's pretty much it. I don't know what else to say about the episode other than the whole entire time in the episode that wasn't that was a whole minute. We had nine minutes left. Now we have eight minutes left. So a lot of these fights are gonna be. <clears throat> I just voice cracked really bad. Oh my goodness um a lot of these episodes are gonna be like a minute long realistically in dragon ball time because of how fast it is but of course for us it's like it's like a, a half hour uh, so of course that's what they have to do because it airs on fuji tv or tv tokyo and stuff like that so anyways that's the end of the episode that's the end of the video i have nothing else other to say other than be on the lookout for next week also be on the lookout for wednesday because that's when the next episode for Boruto comes out. I was looking for the next episode for Boruto last week, but we didn't get it, and I didn't realize that until I just straight up couldn't find it. So it should be very interesting. Um, I'm gonna finish watching the English the English dub because the Ocean dub voice actor for Vegeta uh, actually voices copy Vegeta and those in that filler arc. And stuff like that so that should be interesting that's gonna be uh really funny really interesting i am very excited for that i'm gonna finish final chapters and then i think after that i'm gonna honestly start re-watching uh naruto shippuden and japanese just because why not i need to do the same thing for dragon ball everything dragon ball i need to do the same thing for that but we're gonna have to wait and see but anyways that's the end of the video if you guys did enjoy be sure to drop a like if you're new to the channel please consider hitting the subscribe button future content be sure to push that notification button so you never miss a new video and yeah hope you guys have a fantastic day have a wonderful life have a beautiful life and i'll see you in the next video